StarCast returns to the Chicago area this Labor Day weekend. Tickets for StarCast 6 are now on sale at StarCast.com. Join us at the Hyatt Regency Schaumburg starting Friday night, September 1st, for unique fan experiences with wrestling legends from yesterday and superstars from today. Follow StarCast events on Twitter for the latest updates about all things StarCast. Can't be in Chicago? Premier Streaming Network has you covered. Visit StarCast on Premiere.com and get daily access or save with the weekend bundle. Get all past StarCast, the upcoming wrestling showcase event, as well as thousands of hours of content from your favorite promotions and stars. And two months of Premier Plus for free. Order now at StarCast on Premiere.com. StarCast 6 is brought to you in part by ProWrestlingCrate.com, monthly mystery crates for diehard wrestling fans. Plans start at $9.95 and are the perfect gift for any wrestling fan. Visit ProWrestlingCrate.com today. Excellence in sports entertainment. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to my world. And of course, we couldn't do it without the Hall of Famer, the greatest professional wrestler of all time, your friend and mine, Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff, how are you, man? Oh, Conrad Thompson, my man. We haven't seen each other face to face since uh, Denver. So yeah, last week, last, last uh, Tuesday, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I guess you could say it's a whole lot of chattering going on. Whole lot of chattering going on. I'm oh. not dropping it, Conrad. I've made it up my mind a hundred percent. It's almost just been erased from my. Thank you. Vernacular. And, and I, I, have, I have no idea how you did that. And so anyways. Yes. That, that doesn't come around anymore. And I'm a little bit concerned that Dave Green. Yes. Silva, Casio, you know, I, I don't want to just say your group chat. You probably have several of them, and I'm, I'm sure you do. But whatever that whole lot of chatter when you guys were just throwing barbs at me. Oh, goodness. You, and you're trying to tell me that, that you liked it. But anyway. I'm going to try to keep a whole lot of chatter going on, but uh, excited to be here today, my man. A lot of chatter. New shirt available now, boxagimmicks.com. <laughs> Dude, people love a lot of chatter. I got a text from, uh, well, he works for another company now, but you, he used to be your running buddy back in the day. Okay. And he loved, I just got a text that just said a lot of chatter. <laughs> and I said, Dude, it's fantastic. He can't drop it. He goes, Absolutely. It must uh, stay. Uh, so Everybody I, I, loves a lot of chatter. Yeah. Got to, got to, anyway. So anyhow, uh, so anyways, yeah, so anyways, uh, I'm a hundred percent ready to do this episode of my world fresh off of, uh, you know, Conrad, you know, for the listeners. So Denver last Tuesday. Yep. Podcast movement Jones. We'll get into that. I, I want to pick your brain on something on that. Flew to Atlanta did. Wow. We had a mega taping dynamite and collision, uh, down there in Tony Schiavone land. Uh, Drove home Wednesday night instead of flying out of Atlanta. I wanted to come back here, kind of uh, get my workout in and get my bags packed. And I headed over Thursday night, crossed the pond, did uh, did a little media, did, um, I don't know, did all, all, all the, the usual stuff we'll get into, but uh, did the fan event and then obviously Wembley and then flew home yesterday. And as our – Group text was going. I'll say this, Conrad. You were up early because you responded while I was in flight. And so here we are. We are going to get my world recorded. We're going to be dropping a little bit late today and then headed up Chicago for whew, StarCast and Dynamite and uh, Rampage and Collision. And then uh, we're doing All Out. And uh, shoot, we could reminisce about the original All, all Out, all kind of. A lot of chatter <laughs> going on about that uh, that I had uh, over the weekend. How in five years I talked to some of the Live Nation folks about the Wembley, just the 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 God, what an event! But um, 
on on the growth of the company and it's taken literally uh, almost five years to the day to debut in the market so we'll get into all that conrad but it's been a whirlwind of a week to say the least and uh, pretty damn excited about all of it and uh, we just keep on keeping on we are keeping on keeping on and as folks are listening to this uh, tomorrow night aew is in uh, the home of all in now it's called the now arena back then it was called the sears center and there's still a bronze plaque outside of the building with Cody and the Young Bucks, that iconic all-in poster. What a historic event that was. It still lives on the building to this day, and you can actually see Jeff. Give somebody a guitar necklace, if I had to guess, uh, tomorrow night uh, right there. So pick up your tickets at EWTIX.com. Of course, they'll also tape a Rampage episode that day, so you get a live television taping and then a, uh, a little special Friday treat all in your Wednesday affair. That's AEWTIX.com. And then on Saturday, man, Collision at United Center, the big pay per view all out on Sunday. The card is starting to take shape. I'm pretty excited, man. Kenny Omega and Takeshita. I need that in my life. That's going to be fantastic. I'm sure, there'll be a lot of other fun stuff, but I personally, selfishly, am most excited about StarCast. We've got Tony Khan on stage, Jeez. and he's never been on a StarCast stage before. He's going to be there this Friday night. So just a couple of days after his return to Chicago, just a handful of days after the biggest show in wrestling history, he's going to be on stage at uh, S T A R R C A S T.com. And if you can't make it to pick up a bracelet to meet some of your favorite wrestlers like sting and John Moxley or legends like Kawada or demolition or Jake, the snake or Rob Van Dam, uh, then certainly watch on the premier streaming network. That's starcast on premier.com. You don't just get StarCast 6, you get StarCast 1 through 5 as well. The best value in wrestling by far, uh, StarCast on Premier.com. But, man, you and I decided years ago we were going to go in business together when we first put the first StarCast way back in 2018 with uh, on an online streaming service. And that allowed us the opportunity to, to work together and come up with all these different panels. And it's a little different than... Uh, some of our great friends at like WrestleCon, who no doubt about it, make WrestleMania a memorable experience every year. You get to meet all your favorite wrestlers. This feels a little bit more like a comic con in that we have multiple stages. We've got two stages, sort of the AEW stage and the premiere stage with panel discussions going all the Friday night, all day, Saturday and all day Sunday. And then, oh, by the way, we've got collector's corner. That's just eat up with all your favorite wrestlers, plus an opportunity in the lobby to pick up some new merch, but there'll be, as I understand it, new merchandise revealed, new action figure reveals. We've got a music panel on the behind the music, if you will, for both AEW and TNA. And they just announced that Jeff Hardy's going to join them on stage for a live performance. Kawada's here for the first time in over 35 years. He's never done an autograph signing or session ever in his entire career. His first one, maybe his only one happens this weekend at Starcast. Then he jumps on stage with a little help from our translator, Sonny Ono, and has a great panel discussion with a person who maybe most passionately loves Japanese stress like more than anybody else, Mr. Eddie Kingston. Those panels alone don't even get me started on Jake the Snake and Rob Van Dam. And oh yeah, Soraya's going to be on stage talking to Renee after she just won the women's title, Dan Housen, on and on and on. Something for everybody. Pick up one bracelet. You have access to all the panels. When you break that down, it's just a ridiculously low price. And of course you get to go meet all your favorite wrestlers. That's S T A R R C A S T.com. Make plans to join us in Chicago, but Jeff, mm. I want to talk about Denver first. Yeah. Because in Denver, you and I had the good fortune of, uh, meeting with the heads of Westwood one and all these big agencies. And, um, I mean, just the, the Titans of the industry, if you will. And we got to have discussions with a, a, a buyer who asked, and I, I cut eyes at you three or four times and we haven't talked about it since. Listen, what you guys are doing is great. We love the nostalgia, but have you thought about doing a podcast with a current wrestler? <laughs> and I looked at you and you looked at me. And I said, well, Jeff, you know, he's on, he's on a W, you know, every, usually every Wednesday and every Saturday. And in fact, you know, like over 2 million people just saw him wrestle Jeff Hardy. I don't know if you heard him and I, um, <laughs> Texas chainsaw 
death match. Death I, master death match. I hope this guy's not listed. <laughs> I hope he is. <laughs> because we weren't making fun. We we're just trying to point out that, hey, I know you're not intentionally doing it because you're taking a look and you're saying, no, that's Jeff Jarrett. He was he was the Intercontinental Champion in the 90s. Well, that's right. <laughs> but just a couple days ago, he he wrestled in a video game match. It was the highest rated segment on the show. Like that's not, I mean, that's what happened. <laughs> he, he was th this guy, this guy right here, that guy right sitting right across from me right now, right him. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think it clicked. And because here's the thing, people just wouldn't believe, wait, you mean that guy who wrestled Shawn Michaels and in your house too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still wrestling. I want to know what was going through your mind as I was trying to soft shoe that well, we technically <laughs> do have that. He's, he's about four feet from me right now. You're looking right at him. He's sitting right across from me. Well, Conrad, I'll tell you what the, 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 the immediate thought that came to my mind and just to give our, my world, <laughs> Conrad, I can't believe you led with this. So just to give our, my world listeners a little context and I, was just listening to you, Conrad. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, people are listening to this. They probably have a vision in their mind of a guy who's mid fifties, um, you know, been probably smokes two packs of cigarettes a day, just kind of a seasoned sales rep that, okay. So, you know, give him, cut him a little slack, Conrad. No, no folks. This guy was, Late twenties, probably twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, right. When you say yeah. twenty eight, and gave the appearance that um, he was a weekly watcher and uh, was it was in the know. But Conrad, you gave him uh, either you gave him opportunity or you gave him a little bit more rope and a little bit more rope and a little bit more rope uh, <laughs> because you. He was like, yeah, now Jeff did this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. And he went. Get, he would give his editorial on two different things. But he's like, yeah, but he said, what, what you, you know, look, you have JR. And yes, I, I understand JR. It, you know, he's legendary voice and, and he's, you know, still doing it weekly. But we need a current, so, someone who's, you know, in the ring weekly. Yeah. And, and Bischoff was with us. And, and yeah, okay. I know the lineage there. And, Tony Schiavone and all this, but we need kind of in ring. I just got to tell you, my world listeners, Conrad just kept giving him rope and kept giving him rope and kept giving him rope. And um, the proverbial, by the end of the conversation, Conrad, would you say that he was gasping for air? Well, I mean, listen, we, we, we like brainstorming and we brainstormed a pretty good idea that I won't spoil here, but I remember you and I locking eyes like, Hey, that was pretty good off the top of the head as an idea. It and so you know, we'll see what happens, but. I was just like, man, we, you and I have never been in that spot before. Cause I, I pride myself on, on being an advocate of yours. Like <laughs> I gave you the elevator speech. If you were like, why would anybody want to listen to my podcast? And I gave you that elevator speech, the same one we kind of did as the tease when we first opened the feed for this show. So I'm used to that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, that was when you were an executive. Like when we first started this show, you know, you and I had talked privately off air and you were like, no, I'm never wrestling again. I'm done. And, and now you're wrestling every week. I mean, you just wrestled in front of the largest audience in the history of wrestling. And I'm trying to soft shoe that without just beating him over the head with it. But it was, he wasn't picking up. No, no. The guy in front of you, that guy right there, he just beat up a zombie two days ago, covered in blood him. Yeah. Right we went through the integration and uh, we were relating it to uh, the buyers that, Hey man, you can integrate all kinds yes. of stuff. Uh, yes. on the television, but you can also do that, you know, in the, in the podcast and we have the YouTube feed and Conrad and shout out to Dave green. A lot of chatter going on here, Dave, as you're listening to this episode, we dropped a little bit late today, but no, that the, the I'm, here's what I'm going to say about podcast movement. It was out in Denver at the Gaylord. What a beautiful resort. Man, well, man. But Conrad, that's our third year in a row. And the, the panel um, help me out with the title, uh, how to build a niche audience. Yeah. How to, how to grow, how to cultivate and grow a niche audience or something. And when we went into the description of top guy weekend and, uh, pardon my throwback, we got granular on it, but yes. the questions that the audience, uh, and we didn't leave them much time to ask, but how they were engaged and they came up to me asking, I'm just thinking, you know, we've done 
uh, it's an honor to get up there and talk on those panels. And, and, um, I certainly wouldn't have thought when we kicked this bad boy off, uh, two years ago that I'd be panel discussions and all that kind of stuff in the podcast. But the, the, I guess you could say the beauty of, uh, the, the network you've built, um, is those kind of meetings that took place with the iHearts and the buyers and what we can and can't do and how we integrate all kinds of stuff. But when we went right down to it, the community that we've created uh, at ad free shows is really, really something special because it's a little something for everybody, but it is a uh, unbelievable far reaching community because um, we'll get into it a little bit later, but I, we, you know, most of us stayed at the Wembley Hilton, which is literally a uh, hundred, you know, 50 yards from Wembley stadium. And so it's, it's very commercialized. There's coffee shops and restaurants and everything. Conrad, I can't tell you how many people I ran into um, over the weekend that are not casual listeners. I'm talking every episode listener. So, um, you know, the podcast movement and the recognition I'll just say the name you've built in the podcast world is uh congrats to you hall of famer. I'll say that a lot of fun though. Well, nice of you to say that. I mean, I, I did have a good time with the panel. I greatly appreciate, uh, you know, Dan and Jared for having us again. I think Bruce and I went to our first one back in 2017, I think. Wow. It may have been 2018, but I remember it happened at the same time where you were doing that spoken word tour that was on fight, uh, across the pond. Oh, wow. Because Jeff uh, or, or Bruce and I ducked off into a corner and I got a little code from Mike so we could watch a few minutes and just, you know, see oh, wow. one. Yeah. That's uh, that was back when it was in Philadelphia. We were in Philly, but you were somewhere across the pond. And it was during a heat wave. Yeah, the summer of 2018 was one of the hottest ones on record in the in the UK. But I, I did know that, that you listened to it. I saw some folks there. Man, Conrad, I brought back from Wembley this guitar. Um I'll, I'll get a, I'll get a picture of it. It's right over there. But, um, anyway, I met, I originally met him on that spoken word tour, uh, Luli L, uh, paintings, but, uh, what a keepsake that I brought back across the pond, but, um, I'll be damned. That was 18. Yep. So 20, we talked 20 was you and I's first time together and we had Eric with us and we were in Nashville with Shivani. He drove up that morning. That's right. That's right. Shivani yes. and Eric at the Opryland hotel. That was 21. My bad. Yeah, that was 21. And then 22 last year we were in, uh, Dallas, Dallas. Yeah. And, th and I think next year's in DC. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I've been to tell you, or we'll move on. Cause I know a lot of our listeners don't care about podcast movement chatter, but, uh, I got approached so many times, you know, it turns into like a little meet and greet when you come off stage, people have questions, want yeah. to follow up, blah, 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 but just roaming the halls. I can't tell you how many people stopped and thanked us for what we did and, and just wanted to pick my brain and thank me and blah, blah, blah. But I'm talking doctors, man, who yep. were like, I learned so much from this. And you know, the reality is we're all learning. We're all getting a little better. And uh, maybe you're trying to do that. And we think factor can help. I know it's helped Jeff. You know, if you need wholesome meals without the planning, without the shopping, without the prep, well, man, factors got you covered with dietitian approved meals ready in just two minutes. Yeah. How about get 50% off at factormeals.com slash myworld50? Does it get any easier than that? Make it happen. you would be glad you did. Uh, let's also talk about uh, where we are with, uh, with the rest of the weekend, Jeff. You, um, you leave, jump on the, the jet plane, head to Atlanta, got a big show there, and then ease back home to Nashville, pack a bag, and immediately fly back to Wembley. You haven't, I know that once upon a time you wrestled, I believe Kurt Angle in the Wembley arena. Is that right? I did. I got a good look at it. Got to walk around it. Uh, when I got over there, had some fond memories, lots I mean, of fond memories. You've said before that if you were to you know, tell your kids, or your grandkids one day, Hey, this is what grant, this is what pop pop used to do. One of those matches you might show them, of course, it'd be in your house too. That'd be on the list. You and Sean, but that match at Wembley with you and Kurt, that'd be on the list too, right? Oh, definitely. The UK market, um, again, um, box park was our down at the box park was our, or was our fan event on Saturday, but just, 
you know, I, I, again, get there Friday morning, um, straight over the hotel, getting a workout. I was in and out of the hotel a couple of times, getting something to eat and listening to the fans. And uh, once upon a time, the TNA days, um, this is where, you know, knowing the history of the televised product, um, I just said, the, you know, years ago, WWE broke ground and got on Sky TV. That's in our world in America. That's pay TV cable. Uh, but there's obviously in this country and in that in, in the United Kingdom, big difference between pay and free to air. Well, in the TNA days, we got on Challenge, which is a game show network. So take that into context, but uh, free to air. So our coverage uh, really began our viewership and our coverage and our exposure. It really, really grew. Uh, one of my, you know, I'm not going to say we had a Mac Classic, but uh, – one of the tours in the TNA days, Conrad, and I was going to mention this last time was I did kind of localize angles in uh, the different markets. I did something with uh, Lionheart up in Scotland and we got um, him involved and, and Greg Hempel, uh, a TV star slash comedian engaged uh, old Mossy, who is a NXT coach, John Moss. Um, we did a deal with him and I wrestled him and, uh, you know, hometown boy, uh, but the, yeah, the, my match with Kurt in, um, Wembley arena, so historic. And that's, you know, people here in the States, they may or may not give, give, uh, have a lot of context, just what Wembley means. Um, but you know, in, in the London market, there's lots of different venues now and it's, you know, six, 8,000. So it's certainly not the biggest it's, it's, it's older now. It still holds a lot of events, but, um, it was special. One of my favorite matches, the London crowd, they were all over it. TNA as a brand uh, was really, really growing uh, in so many ways. We had so much upside on the horizon. Um, promoters were coming to us. We knew that we were going to be, be able to set up um, two, if not three. So, yeah, it's a, it's a special, special place. And, you know, when you get into stadium, it's a whole nother, that may be the most, I had a conversation, uh, Sunday and look, I'm probably going to get criticized for this, but it's my lack of knowledge. Uh, it's not because I mean to, it may be the most famous soccer slash football stadium in the world. I, I, I believe so. It is, you know, it is a Madison square garden. Um, I, I don't even know that I have any real, because, you know, here in America, everything is the new, new, new. It's there, you know, that life has been there forever. I'm just trying to think of, you know, the old Boston Garden's gone. Uh, Madison Square Garden is an arena, but I'm just trying to think of a stadium that has even close to relevance. But, um, yeah, that area, Conrad, um, we're going back. That's a whole other conversation we'll get into. I'd love to next year see you over there. And uh, I probably let. Uh, probably shouldn't be talking out of school here, but yeah, special, special, special. I don't even know what dead gum question you asked me, Conrad, but uh, well, I just wanted to ask, you know, you wrestled Kurt Angle in Wembley arena. And now all these years later, you're back over there in front of the largest crowd in wrestling history. So and look at there, take a look, folks. We predicted it. We called it as soon <laughs> as tickets were announced. I mean, they went on sale back in may boys and girls, but we got the word out well in advance of them going on sale of what to expect that it was going to be all about the last outlaw. And, uh, man, you see all those pictures throughout the history of your career. You know, I, that made me think of something. I asked you last week when we talked about the business of the wrestling business, and we talked about the, the building and the creation of the Texas chainsaw massacre death match. I asked you, which is a great question asked on Twitter. What do you think Jim Cornette will have to say about this match? <laughs> and thanks to our crack researcher who helps us with some of our formats and things. Derek Sabato, he found the exact quote. From oh, wait, 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 hold on. Cornette responded. Cornette. Well, he didn't respond to. No, not, not our show, but I mean, he, yes, Cornette's, Cornette's podcast reviews everything that happens on TV. So they'll talk about what happened on raw, what happened on SmackDown and more specifically what happened on collision and dynamite. And then, you know, 
Cornette does what Cornette does. I know. Yeah. I, hey, it, it's a business model, my man. And he's, yeah, he's got it dialed in. Yes. Uh, so here's what he had to say. <clears throat> So this is one of the fakest, most embarrassing things that's ever been on any wrestling program television. I'm embarrassed that Jeff Jarrett was involved, that he apparently needs this badly. Now yet Jeff, goddamn, he started promotions. He's been fucking in the business. He's fucking been in the business since 1986, 37 years. He needs a job badly enough to willingly be involved in this. And there was one legitimate talent in the entire fiasco, Jay Lethal. And think of the things he could be doing and the matches he could be having in this company. And he's as hidden as Sanjay Dutt and just one of the merry band members of pranksters. I can't believe everybody else in this thought this was a great thing to do, except for Jeff Jarrett. And I know Jay lethal knows it's garbage, but he has no other choice. Now, listen, I understand this segment wasn't for everybody. And you and I have talked about that. Like I made the analogy here on the program oh. about my daughter and Naomi's light up belt once before. And I thought it was stupid, but didn't say that out loud. And she said, Oh dad, that's the coolest belt ever. And I realized, okay, this just wasn't for me. I'm also not a game player. I don't, I don't make it my business to sit down and, and play console games. I have before. Uh, and, 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 and I will again, I'm sure, but I'm not like a, I got a headset and I log in and I'm, I'm not in tune with that, but people in my circle are, so I know it's a big thing. And I know that every nickel from that show, the live gate and this integration was donated to charity. So I think you get a pass for all things in the name of charity. I mean, there was a mountain dew match at WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt's last match at WrestleMania was a mountain dew match against LA Knight. but it's the wrestling business. And there's a bunch of money coming in for this sort of thing. And the number that's been reported online that was associated with that integration is way low. You and I know it's way low, but it all went to charity. How in the world can this be a bad thing? So I love it. Can you read that? I just, I, I want to, can you read just the first line again? Cause I, I, so this is one of the fakest, most embarrassing things that's ever been on any wrestling program. Okay. Let, let's just stop there. I got, I got to ask you that. Well, I, I, I want to ask you this. I'll let you comment if you want to. There is there, there's not even 1% chance that Cornette actually believes what came out of his mouth. He's got a business and he is dialed into his audience yes. and he's making money hand over foot. His YouTube views are excellent. His downloads are excellent. He's he, he has created a business that is I guess I served it up to him on a silver platter because the fake is no, you did come on now. Well, here's, here's what's I'm glad that he said it because he, he introduced the Texas chainsaw massacre to his entire audience. Yes. And he talked about it and scathed about it and all everything that goes with it. So hats off to him, but it, when he said the fakest, most embarrassing, I just think back to a, a few of, um, be careful I'll, now. Come on now. Well, don't, go, don't go picking fights and throwing stones at old bad creative. A friend of mine says creative subjective. It is. No, I, that's that. I guess that's just what I'm chuckling about. You know? Oh, listen, cause we can both make a list of silly shit and wrestling. Yes, that's what, that's what I'm saying. That's I know that's what you're thinking, but it's like, then it looks like you're getting in a pissing contest and that's you. not what you mean. No, not at all. No. What yeah. I'm saying is hats oh. off to corny. Yeah, absolutely. I on the dark side, those, uh, and I read Bruce had some pretty controversial comments about that, but I think, uh, Evan, when you really drill down the dark side, uh, series. I I'm not sure that Cornette's not the most valuable player because he's the glue on camera. Oh, that, dude. He's so good on that show. I was going to say that can give it context in, in kind of multiple, um, he's a historian and look, there's a lot of great historians out there. Uh, I, you know, we personally know, I mean, Mooney ham 
and Mark James. You probably know more than me. I think Meltzer is a historian. Oh, for sure. Certain degree. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but but Cornette being with his, you know, uh, hell, my old man, you know, whenever that break came so many years ago, but Jimmy ha- has taken the ball with his tennis racket and run and run and run because he has a gift to gab. But you kind of look at his ability to incite an audience, or let me not incite, that's probably too strong, create emotional engagement. I'll say that. Well, and, and here's what you can't fake about Cornette. Like to me, the thing about Cornette that defines it most of all is the word passion. Oh, it, yeah. Man, he, he is in, I mean, his promos on TV, his promos on his podcast. Like you can just That's feel he believes everything he's saying with every fiber of his being and he's delivering it with that conviction and yeah. conveying that emotion. And I mean, and, and, and to your point, I'm sure you're glad he talked about it because it did but, pique curiosity from people who might not have normally seen it. Because as I understand it, it was such a success that the Turner people sent out a press release, right? They did. And they touted that X number of million people impressions, blah, 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 right? Yeah. On the plus three viewership, which, you know, every week we hear it did 800, did 900, you know, all these different numbers. Again, I hate to always reference this, but just in my day-to-day conversation with different folks, um, people will, they, they want to break down that weekly rating kind of like the attitude era, like, Oh my gosh, can you believe that? And, you know, we just live in such a, the world is completely, completely changed. The cord cutting keeps accelerating and accelerating and accelerating. And, um, you know, that you just, you, you know, hear that number, you know, a Wednesday show, the number comes out on Thursday afternoon you know, three thirty, four thirty, And back in the, I'll call it the spike days at TNA. I can tell you Friday afternoons from about one thirty until I heard the number noon, one thirty. that, that was front and center because it was, and okay, let me back up. Not the viewership that everybody's on. That demo rating was everything to Kevin K. What was the demo last night? Because then that, it, that's what translates to money period that i mean that is how you go sell a, a, ads and, and that's the money that but that's I mean, not that long ago but that's 15 years ago nowadays that first number that comes out you got plus threes and then you've got all the views that are going to come in and you know the texas chainsaw massacre massacre uh it was either one or it teetered back and forth between one and two for the next seven days so um yeah, I'm glad Corny mentioned it. I, I, he probably drove some views uh, on the AEW YouTube channel, and people got to see it. And that ultimately is something that, you know, uh, well, Warner Brothers Discovery put out a press release. They they touted the number, the integration, and and now you have a nice three to five to seven page deck that you can create that so- shows. This is how we integrated a video game in a so three, four, let's just say all total eight minute, nine minute segment on TV. But for eight to nine minutes, this is what extrapolated out of it. Conrad, it's super impressive. I mean, really, really impressive. Not just that, but let's mention it's shared on all forms of social media, not just in the wrestling bubble, but in the video game bubble. So it was a huge success. It drew money folks and all of that money went to charity. So, uh, thanks for the plug corny and keep doing what you're doing. By the way, I think the reason he's so successful as we talked about is passion. That's the reason he was great as a manager. That's the reason he's great as a podcaster. I mean, I, I listened to that dude, read the phone book. He'd find a way to make it entertaining. And, uh, I would love to hear him do a read for miracle brand. Did you know that your temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts of your sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Maid's bed sheets. Inspired by NASA, Miracle Maid uses silver infused fabrics and makes temperature regulated bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night. Not only that, these sheets that I mentioned are infused with silver. Well, that allows prevention of up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. That means they're going to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than regular sheets. No more gross odors. It's worth mentioning. These are luxuriously comfortable. These miracle made sheets. 
without the high price tag of the luxury brand. So it's going to feel like you're staying at a five-star hotel, but you didn't have that five-star price. Stop sleeping with bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts, breakouts and acne. You can sleep much cleaner with miracle. And again, those silver infused fabrics that are inspired by NASA, they're thermoregulating folks designed to help you keep that perfect temperature all night long. So you sleep better every single night with your miracle made sheets. Try it for yourself. Go right now to try miracle.com slash my world. That's try miracle.com slash my world to try miracle made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you'll save over 40%. And if you use our promo code, my world to check out, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a refund. Upgrade your sleep with miracle made. Go to mir- try miracle.com slash my world. That's try miracle.com slash my world. Use that code. My world claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's try miracle.com slash my world to treat yourself. So let's, let's get back on the train, man. We were talking a little bit about, um, all in and, and I have sort of, uh, explained before that somehow, some way cats have nine lives, but Jeff Jarrett has 10 <laughs> and you found yourself in all these crazy moments in wrestling history. And now somehow, some way you didn't have this on your bingo card when you were wrestling Ric Flair in his last match a year ago. Hell, you didn't think you'd be doing that or main eventing or being the referee, the co-main event at SummerSlam at your hometown. Can we call a timeout real quick? Yeah. I, it, no matter where I go, Ric Flair's last match. Really? I, I got it. Yes. Cause we had, to, yeah. Okay. So again, let me ask you that. I'm going to really get off. To, have you been into one of those Amazon stores where you put a credit card? You just, yeah, I can tell. I don't think you know what I'm talking about. You, I don't, I don't understand. It, okay. You walk in, you put down your credit card, and a turnstile opens up like you're going through a, a, a gate. You go in. Okay, you put the credit card down, you go in. And and they have, it's like a convenience store, 7-Eleven, whatever. It's a convenience store. So I got uh, two waters, two yogurts, some fruit, um, I don't know, whatever, some other things. Karen got all this. Conrad, you just kind of work your way around the store. And then when you get to the exit, you just walk out. The cameras and the weights on the shelves, it tabulates by f- face recognition. There, there's no, I mean, that's it. You, that's how you pay. You, well, you, well, yeah, you do pay, but there's no transaction. There's nothing. Have you seen one of those stores? No. Nope. It's totally real, ir- irrelevant to, to my I live world. in Huntsville, Alabama, Jeff. <laughs> I hadn't seen a store like that. No. And I live in Hendersonville. But uh, in- here we still use cash. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. It was, yeah. It's is the craziest thing in the world, but not in London at the Amazon little market. I walked out, and sure enough, a guy came up and went right into raving about, you know, watched it, and I grew up, and you know, I don't want to take light of this, but he was his father's favorite wrestler. Wow. He, he got to travel over with the, his uncles, and they went to a show in Philly, and. You know, just a, a great early 80s wrestling story and just all that kind of stuff. But he asked, he said, I can't really find a, uh, uh, a, a merch. Is there a poster you can buy? So I'm just asking you that. Is, is there? I mean, he wanted Ric Flair's last match, a, a, a really a card. That's what he was asking. Yeah, that, we can do that. Uh, it, th- that. You can't buy that anywhere, though, right? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I should probably know, but, uh, we'll make sure we throw something up over at, um, Box uh, Box so, yeah. Box com. Why not? Okay. So I sorry mean, to have a year ago, but I don't think we were still actively promoting it, but I'm sure I got some stuff. We'll hook him up. Yeah. How about well, this, if you were that guy, DM me, I'll make sure I just send you some stuff. Okay. Um, so you find yourself in front of the biggest crowd in wrestling history. And, and man, you have been a part of a lot of big stuff. Obviously, you know, sold out mid South Coliseums were a part of your history and then all over the world as a part of the WWF machine in the new generation era business was down, but 
Then you jumped on that nitro train and business was a booming everywhere you went. You come over. It's never been hotter during the attitude era. You venture out, start your own thing. You've, you've been to wrestle kingdom. You've been to triple mania. You've been on WrestleManias, but never a crowd this big. Isn't that something? Conrad. Get that's so far away. If you're watching on YouTube, the perspective of how far away the fans are to you, it almost feels like a Photoshop, but I know it's not. I watched it. I mean, that's how it looked massive, Jeff. I don't know where you want me to start. I really don't. Um, all right. I'll tell you. I, I just I, I, I really don't know where to start, but I'll I'll start here. So you know, waking up, um, me and Karen, and okay, what time we got to be over there? And um, you know, there was a massive crowd outside the the Hilton, and they had they would take us down a back alley to do a car service. It's only like I said, it's it's fifty yards. It's very very close, but they had uh, car services, uh, vans, and black cars to shuttle us back and forth. So Karen's like, I'm going to go a little bit early. So I didn't go with her. So, uh, I went probably 45 minutes later, uh, and, and got over there. But when I got there and I'd been there the day before on load in or two days before. And, um, Conrad, I want to tell you a story about box park. Um, that was the fan of it. So don't let me forget that. But, you know, walking on, on game day, on show day, uh, getting to the arena and walking, out and look with the sound checks and I'll call it just, you know, I don't say rehearsals, not in ring rehearsals. I'm talking about music cues and lighting and camera and that camera that went around Conrad, like the, in football games, the, um, you know, it's on, it's on two different, it's on di different wires, but it could cir it could circle the whole ring, just all the technology and the production. And, you know, they were doing some pyro tests that were going to come off the roof. Just walking around that, Conrad, I uh, I looked at it, and I took a quick video, and I sent it to my pastor. And I said, because uh, he, he he loves wrestling, and um, I'll call it back in his BS days, um, which he had some BS days uh, before sobriety, um, he had a uh, itching to pot potentially be a wrestler, but thank God – he uh, was called to do what he does because he's absolutely unbelievably great. But I sent it to him, and, and I knew that it was, you know, 536 in the morning because it was noon over there, and I just sent him that, and I said, hey, man, I'm going to be listening to you, uh, but from uh, I won't be there at the 8 a.m. this week. I'm going to be uh, listening to you from Wembley Arena. Uh, and so we had kind of a text exchange. But, I, I at the you know, as a part of that, and then I told Karen, I didn't lose sight of the fact uh, on Sunday of where I was in October, November, December of 2017. Um, you know, losing my dad earlier this year, um, just, just life. I'll just say life. I don't want to make this too heavy, but I didn't really lose perspective for me to be a part of, and I knew at that time, I, I knew several weeks ago, I said, there's no doubt with the momentum, it's going to break the legitimately, the legitimate record, most paid attendance of any wrestling show in history to be a part of that Conrad. I didn't lose sight of it. Um, very grateful. Uh, it was amazing. We can talk about production. We can talk about the matches. We can kind of how the stars aligned. Uh, I want to, give John Williams a shout out the ITV exec who's kind of an unsung hero in 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 a lot of ways I think I I know how important television distribution is in creating brand awareness and a consistency um talent from top to bottom the growth the original all in I mean we could go on and on and on but me being able to be a part of this event Conrad no matter how big or small it may be. And we've laughed and cut and joke, joked. And we talked earlier about the guy, 
you know, at podcast movement, staring across the table and saying, we need a back to wrestling. And you're going, Hey dude, he, he was just seen by 2.3 million people in an integration on a main event of a rel- of a current TV show, but all that together, Conrad, I didn't lose sight of that Sunday morning and I soaked it all in and really was just amazed, uh, that, um, now, that I got to be a part of it. I mean, you said it just a second ago. Conversations we had, no, Conrad, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm basically done uh, my in-ring career. I want to be an executive, uh, live events or marketing or international or whatever my passion takes. But to be uh, standing in that ring and Marcus, that, that, that picture that was just up a second ago, when you grab a microphone and you're in a stadium, And it echoes and not just echoes, but the adrenaline rush and look, Shivani was in the ring. I I didn't lose sight of me getting to work with him and boss him around, you know, be in the ring with Sanjay and my wife and Satnam and that group. And we'll get into Grado long relationship that, that me, that I have with him. Um, Conrad, it, it just goes without saying exceedingly and abundantly more than I I could ever ask or imagine. It's incredible. And it just, it really is. And it, it, it is a historic day for a Jarrett to be a part of that event. Hey guys, need to call a quick time out here. Wanted to tell your listeners what I've been telling my listeners over at OU you didn't know for a while now about all the cool things happening over at adsfreeshows.com. On the latest edition of The False Finish, Zach Gowan talks about reaching the top of the pro wrestling world against incredible physical odds before issues with immaturity got in his way. It's not a talent issue, it's a maturity issue. We want to see you continue to wrestle try new characters, become a heel, try new things, find a groove, the doors open, just mature a little bit. But it, it, but the, it was almost fatherly the way he sat me down and explained to me exactly why I was being released. And I'll always remember that. And I'll always thank Jim Ross every time I see him for that. As Dog and Cassio finished up their latest Ask Dog Anything, they kept the party going for ad-free shows members, answering more questions on a bonus overrun. Uh, we were the main event. Me and Brian Christopher were the main event. Doug was in a um, up there match. Yeah. Jamie Dundee was in a tag <laughs> title match, I'm sure. And we just stopped and started playing pool and drinking. Like, that was what we did. We pulled through the median and turned around and just called from a payphone and said, yeah, our car, our car can't make it. That's just a small taste of what we got waiting for you. With four levels to choose from, see for yourself why Ads Free Shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adsfreeshows.com. It was fantastic. I love seeing you on the show. Uh, I have to admit, I wasn't looking forward to whatever Big Show had planned for you when he came out. Uh <laughs> And I couldn't believe that nothing happened in Grado was there. Oh, in Grado. What about Anthony Agogo? How about it, man? He looks like a star, doesn't he? So I would had some text exchange with him over, uh, obviously he's silver medalist in boxing. Uh, I think 2012, um, I was picking his brain before I went to the media tour, several weeks before I went to the media tour. I'd never met him face to face. Uh, until Sunday. Uh, and it was, I, when I tell you a very, 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 very brief, uh, uh encounter. Uh, but that dude, whew, he's got charisma, man. He, he has got, and I don't know much of his in ring past, uh, you know, and I know it's, it's very limited, but, uh, I, I, I feel that I'm a pretty good judge of charisma. Um, I think mechanics is important, but it's not the end all be all, but Anthony's got some, um, he's got not some, he's got a lot of charisma, a lot of upside, but yeah. Old Paul white first faced him. What? 96. Um, and then I will never forget. I mean, ever your promo against the giant before Halloween havoc. Oh no. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase, Oh no! <laughs> but you were still doing some of your double J you had the Venetian blinds on. 
and you're doing your ho hos and I love that so much. And so you're backstage, and I think, if memory serves, it's Stagger Lee Marshall holding the mic for you. Oh, God. And you say something like, Giant, you may whoop my butt, but you will not choke slam me. Oh, no. And I don't know why, but the idea that you're like, I'm getting my ass kicked, but he won't put this move on me. I don't know why, but I was like, I like that. That's a good promo. Because in all logical thinking, how would David ever trash talk Goliath? You don't do that. Like that, that can't happen. And so when you were like, I gotta go another way with this. Oh, there it is. I'm telling you, dude, go back and watch that promo. Y'all. If you're a real double J fan, watch this promo. He says something like, Oh, giant, you're going to beat my butt tonight, but you will not choke slam me. And I don't know why it just tickled me to death. Well, Conrad, that's the heel setup. You got to tell them, no, 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 no. You're not doing that to me. Boom. No. I want to talk about that with Terry Funk because we've been doing a lot of tributes for Terry Funk this week. We got a lot to talk about, but I did want to follow up on Grado. Go ahead. Okay, hold on. The in-ring promo. I thought you might put a smile on your face when I mentioned the Crockett's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Crockett's, the Von Eriks. Yep. Garrett's, the Grams. Um, you yeah. did all the territories. I did, I did. I did territories and the good old London faithful. Shut the F up. Boom. I mean, they, that I got some comments from live nation folks who, you know, they're, they're concert promoters. So I, they're yeah. not dialed into wrestling and they've known me on zoom calls and the business. Yeah. yeah that, and they, and like, I mean, they'd see me, you know, they know I was an on-screen character, but you know, as a part of the show. And at that time, a lot of, a lot of chatter, Dave green, but a lot of moving parts. And then the crowd just starts telling me, shut the F up. And <laughs> afterwards they were like, Jeff, they, they didn't like you talking about that. That kind of offended me. And I said, ma'am, that's exactly what needed to happen out there. But, uh, that's what we were looking for. It's exactly what we were looking for. So, and then Grado. Hey, so I got to tell you, I, I, I had a guess considering that in your pre-show or, you know, before, weeks ago when you're over promoting the show, when you destroyed Grado, I just thought, well, there's probably going to be a chance that we see him there. And I kind of assumed knowing Tony's penchant for licensing real music, that if he had the entire Wembley stadium singing a Madonna song, that was going to go bananas. We didn't get that, but we did get you getting a taste of your own medicine. And I say this as someone lucky enough and fortunate enough to have never been hit with a guitar. And despite what your son, Cody promised me on Sunday, I guarantee I'll never get hit with a guitar. <laughs> Uh, how was it getting, getting hit with a guitar? It was cracked. Uh, you, YouTube, uh, folks are seeing that, uh, the attention seeking glory hound whore commonly known as oh. Grado. Wow. He's too much. Look at, look at the buffoon right there. Look at that shot on YouTube. What a moron, a true buffoon. That's Scottish. Hurtful. Huh? That's hurtful. You're being mean and rude. To who? To to Grado, friend of the show, Grado. I like Grado. Oh, I like Grado too. I helped give him a huge that that one tweet did like two million views uh on Talk Sport, which by design, Conrad, uh he wanted to get slappy and get irritable. And there was a presenter over there that I said, Hey, I may smack you with this guitar. And he said, Yeah, bring it on. But Grado did did the job just as well but uh no grado he got his uh come up it's he 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 gave it back to me um you know it, certainly a moment for my, my my scottish man but uh no when his video wall came up that that's something that you just let's give some context to our american listeners who might not be super familiar with grado grado is on one of the top tv shows across the pond and he's been a, a wrestler for a long long time but he's found life as just like a uh, a television star over there as well right yes it, yeah grado icw it at one time it was the hottest uh independent wrestling promotion uh in, in the united kingdom it's super hot there, there was there was a few, but in a lot of ways, I can't say that Grado's the only by any stretch. But he's one of the the 
for sure, breakout talents that uh, really ignited independent wrestling uh, across the pond and, you know, kind of rode that lightning bolt. Uh, he obviously worked at impact slash TNA, uh, worked, you know, all over the place, but he kind of parlayed that into, uh, a Scottish, uh, yeah, Scottish BBC series, a English BBC series. Um, he does, uh, kind of right. You familiar with the Panama show, uh, that they have anyway, I think he said they have 1500 sold out 1500 people per show. I want to say he does 60 or 90. I'm going to get that wrong. They're already sold out, but they're basically Christmas shows. So he is a, uh, you know, in our words, a stage show Broadway. He's a sitcom. Um, he does a morning radio show now. Um, you know, he, he's, he's definitely, you know, much more than an independent wrestler. And he's really had an incredible career. And look, I've had him, we, he, he, we, we created a friendship years and years ago. Uh, he spent time with the kids and Karen and been here to the house and we've been out of the boat a couple of times and all that. So, uh, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a special experience, but, um, what's crazy is, is that, um, the promotional stunt that took place ago, there was no master plan or where this was going to go or that was going to go, but, um, I got to give Tom Campbell um, of Cultaholic, Conrad. You familiar with Tom? Oh, yeah. Buddy, he got word that Jarrett Grado, and I can assure the listeners this, a Jarrett Grado single match, I don't believe was ever even discussed. Right. Uh, it, because you just look at, you know. How loaded the card is. You don't have Tom. Yeah, you, you don't. And he is a, not a quote unquote on the AEW roster. So that right. was, I mean, he may have been in the corner, maybe a six man at one time. There was an eight man. One time there was a 10 man discussion, all, all kinds of different things. But at the end of the day, a lot, lot of chatter that went on with it. But, um, Oh, Tom led the charge and he wasn't happy with it. And the amount of social media buzz that took place, I'll call it the seven days beforehand. My gosh. So, when Grado's video wall popped up, uh, what a roar in the crowd. It was it was big. It was a big, big pop. And this is an hour before the actual show started. So uh great moment. It, it was it was a really, really good moment uh across the board. And Grado, uh, you still got a receipt coming. Uh oh, there's some things. Yeah, it's the way I figure it. We're we're tied at one apiece, so there's still more to come. Uh, by the way, you can live some of this fun action yourself with double J now. Thanks to WrestleQuest for mega cat studios. It's now available. WrestleQuest is a love letter to classic role-playing games, the pixel art of our youth and the golden era of professional wrestling power bomb your way through a massive game where the worlds of toys and action figures and wrestling collide. This is a sweaty, spectacular pro wrestling take on the cherished Japanese role-playing game genre, over 40 hours of core story content, over two dozen fully licensed pro wrestling legends like Macho Man Randy Savage and Andre the Giant and Jake the Snake and DDP and Jeff Jarrett and more. It's even the first video game I think Bruiser Brody's ever been in. Yeah, Bruiser Brody and the Road Warriors and Coco Beware. The list just goes on and on. It spans decades and promotions featuring talent from all over the world and more than just statues. Each legend has their own side quest. Players can earn their wrestler signature gear or the right to call upon their finishing moves in combat. And in some cases, the wrestler can even join the player as their manager. You can cut promos on your opponents before fighting them in the ring. You can customize your walkout routine, including your theme music, your pyro and all the other effects. Of course, we're talking about wrestle quest available now on PC consoles and mobile. It's wrestle quest. Available now on PC consoles and mobile. So check it out. Can't believe this is a real sentence, but I'm in the game too. How about that? Uh, the game was not over for you though. After you get out there and you make some history in Wembley. Conrad, before we keep going on Wembley and box park and all that, do you know, Russell quest has trended every day under the what's hot kind of column on PlayStation, the game. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, 
I won't make this a Russell quest, but it, it's, it's, and the, the DLCs we have coming, uh, when I say larger than life folks, larger than life. So it's, it, the, the launch has been unbelievably, uh, super, super successful and positive and just keep rolling. Who'd have thought Conrad two years ago that you'd be doing a, uh, Russell quest with you in the game read. No, it's crazy, dude. And what's crazy to think is the day the game dropped last Tuesday, you and I were together in Denver. Okay. Now, one week later, you were just removed from the Texas death match. And now one week later, you're just removed from Wembley stadium. And now Starcast is on the other corner. Like there's so much going on. It's hard to keep up with. And I, uh, I heard a lot of rumor and innuendo about box park. I heard our pal, Tony Schiavone had all those fans chanting his name. He just couldn't believe it. He sort of explained to me, it's almost like uh, a London equivalent, like a Dave and Buster's. Yep. And I understand you guys had a little sort of a tailgate sort of vibe and there was some Q and A's. And as I read online, I can't believe this is real. Boy, somebody lobbed a doozy at Miss Karen Jarrett. And Karen's pretty quick on her feet, but my goodness, she's got some heat everywhere she goes and she knows how to handle it in stride, doesn't she? So this is what I loved. Uh, and yeah, the box park it, it's branded. There's, there's more than one, but the box park Wembley is the biggest one. And they have fan events. They have viewing parties, uh, the, a couple of, um, the anniversary of SummerSlam, uh, 92, uh, they did this huge watch partner. He hooked on wrestling. Our buddy, Paul Benson puts it on. So all kinds of fan events, it's kind of the it place to go, but, um, oh, Karen, I got to brag on her Conrad. She. Went a day later, obviously, family duty, and we'll call it Cody, you know, got to take care of the coaster. So I landed Friday morning. Karen landed Saturday morning at 9.40, no, 9.52. Supposed to land at 9. Anyway, let's just say a little before 10. She cleared customs, Conrad, got her bag. I uh, said, honey. You can do Uber, but I suggest you go right to a black taxi. They know exactly what's up. They're going to get you there the fastest. Got to the hotel, got ready, and was on stage and at, at, at 12, 15. I was, I was impressed. I was impressed. But, um, yeah, it was sold out. This is one of those um, events that when tickets went on sale back in May, whenever that, that day was, this event sold out immediately. They had photo ops and um, – Autograph sessions. Yeah. The photo, it was, it was live nation. It was really, really cool event. Um, but, uh, we, me and Karen, uh, were asked to do a Q and a. And so with a, I can't say it's an intimate setting, but yeah, 2000 people in the room or however many that place holds, but you know, you, you're going to think, all right, Tony Schiavone and, and, uh, RJ city was the one who was on stage for us. And, you know, you just kind of think, okay, folks, we're going to bring, you know, a hall of famer and Karen or his wife, whatever the intro was Conrad, I hate to say this, but I kind of expected, I don't want to say cheers, but, but not just this deafening booze Conrad, they booed the shit out of us just on the introduction. I said, okay, here we go. We're going to have some live rounds. So that kind of set the table. And have you, you've already talked to Tony about the box park event, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he let you in on his cursing? I'll say that diplomatically. So. No, no, I didn't know about this. Oh, I may have talked out. Of no, 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 no. We're live, pal. Go ahead. We're live to tape. We don't edit this show. <laughs> so he didn't tell you, did he? Nope. So you tell me, spill the beans. So I guess, you know, Tony's up there and he, this is AEW business and we're official and look, business is business you're representing the brand and you know everything that you should do as the legendary hall of fame announcer that mr shivani is but i guess there were some folks in there and i'm gonna they're very very familiar with the ad free family um I, i'll just say this let me just hypothetically ask you have you ever heard of a cuss word come out of tony's mouth on what happened when yeah Okay, that's I, that, I wasn't aware that there was Tony Schiavone uses the word fuck like a comma. Okay, so, so so I'll just say the box park crowd encouraged him to use some of his day to day language. I got you. 
<laughs> and he didn't disappoint. So yeah. I'm told. I love it. So I, love it. I heard that story before I went on stage. And then when me and Karen stepped up on stage, they're just booing. I mean, Conrad, as if I'm in the ring re wrestling Shawn Michaels, uh, 1988 baby face. And I'm the, I mean, they were, they, they were, they were all over us. Um, and then we started the Q and a, and there were some serious questions and not, and somebody threw a live round and I don't think they'll ever do that again to Karen. I invited him on stage. <laughs> I invited the young man on stage and the security was like, what's Jeff going to do? I said, Hey man, why don't you come up on stage and let's talk about this? You've got a question. I'd rather us just talk about it. He had some second thoughts on that. So, uh, here's it, the thing uh, that, that I think everybody who really has been paying attention already knows, but maybe if you're a little slow on the uptake, let me just catch you up. If you meet Jeff and I in real life, you're going to have a wonderful experience. However, if you meet our wives, they're the only two people we're scared of. Like Karen is the real heat. Karen's the real, like you don't want to pissed off Karen. I mean, that's, that's not something you want on you. That's not something you wish on your, on your worst enemy. So in the future, I would advise you don't let sugar in your mouth melt. I mean, that's how sweet you need to be. Just <laughs> lots of sugar with Mrs. Karen. Just leave it at that. So Conrad, I'll just, we'll put a button on box park. So knowing the com uh, Shivani conversation and kind of feeling the room and answering a couple of different questions and. They started the F you Jarrett chance not long after I've been on stage and back and forth. I did my best Tony Shivani impersonation for about 30 seconds. Oh, did you? You I were letting it fly? <laughs> yes. I love it. So uncharacteristic of me. So uncharacteristic. Especially when there's a microphone. Now I've seen real life working, Jeff, just let one slip. But <laughs> like, that's not that's not professional, Jeff, at all. Not at all. Uh, you know, listen, speaking of professional. I can't believe this is real, but we should at least touch on it. There's lots more to talk about on this card. And I still want to talk about Terry and Bray, but my goodness, man, college football is finally here. <sighs> Are you ready for week one? Well, DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you up with a can't miss offer to start the season strong this week. New customers can bet just $5 on college football and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Anything can happen in college football. Your team can go from unranked to dynasty mode in just a couple of years. Change comes fast. The only thing that's a lock is the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. Life's more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use our code MYWORLD. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code MYWORLD, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, dial 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccp.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Let's download the app right now, baby. DraftKings Sportsbook. Conrad? Here. I know you're going to talk trash to me. I'm ready for it. I don't know if you saw, but just last week on the very first episode of college game day, they went around the horn and they asked everybody, who do you think's there at the end? And they went to our boy friend of the show, Pat McAfee. Yep. He says Alabama is going to beat Georgia in the national championship. And David Pollock is the person to blame. He sat at the elbow of Nick Saban and said, Georgia runs college football. That's all the motivation that Nick Saban said. And then Kirk curb street. The other resident ESPN expert said, nope, they won't be Alabama beating Georgia. It'll be Alabama beating Ohio state, his own alma mater. That's right. The two preeminent talking heads about college football have both picked Alabama to win it all. And I said to myself, self, when are they going to talk about what Tennessee is going to do? <laughs> Nothing. That's what Tennessee is going to do. Your chance to respond, sir. 
download the DraftKings app. Yeah. Use the promo code MYWORLD yes. because, folks, Double J is in the game and in our kind of ad-free family. I'm just going to get it on a statement here. Everyone is playing for second place. I'm oh. competing. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're all competing. And I, folks, here I'm letting you in on a little inside baseball. We kind of it's not like an office pool, but it's somewhat like that. I'm competing against some other ad-free family members, if you will. And DraftKings promo code My World is important to me because I want everybody to witness and and just tune in from week to week because everybody's playing for second. But Conrad. You know, because we've been talking about this, and I want to go through the card just briefly when we get to it on the Wembley card because there were some really unique moments that I want to share kind of my perspective because it's 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 a monumental. It just there, there was, uh, you know, it, it's special. But I'll say this. So I wasn't home. McAfee and Herb Street. Picked Both picked Alabama. Alabama. Yes, sir. Yep. They didn't say Wait. shit. About Tennessee, did they not? Did they not? Are, are we? It, did any kind of conversation? Uh, Pat no. McAfee when they went, they said, "And what do you think about Tennessee?" He looked right at the camera and went, "Not how, really, not really." I did that. How for dare you. that ESPN suit do that? Not really. Not really. Just to that. Piece. Oh, they, they both picked Alabama. Well, well, who do y'all have? That's what was the defense dominating this year? Uh, me, excuse me. Uh, Give me some inside thirty seconds or less. Okay. I, I, all right. Ready, set, Nick Saban. I'm done. Yeah. That's it. I'll, I'll give you that. Nick Saban. That's it. Leadership in college football. It's everything. <laughs> you you have to get a, a group of kids and their ins and outs and transfer portal and do this and do that. It Your lineage has nothing to do with it. Your five-star recruits that you've had for 20 years – that's getting them in the pipeline. But what are you going to do with your 50, 60, 70 kids this year? Saban doesn't have any peers. I hate to say that. I really, really hate to say that. But the leadership and and putting the the piece the, the chess pieces in the right position at the right time. Wow. Conrad, you're an Alabama guy. Are you not saying, hey, we got a dominant defense, our offensive line? We've got this running back that's special. We've got a group of receivers that you can't defend. That, you're just saying save it. Not this weekend because it's it's inconsequential. But next weekend, when we go upside Texas's head, you'll you'll figure it out. Oh, boy. Here's the trash talking. No, it's not trash talk. It's just facts. Yeah. There's no – I mean, you listen. almost sound as silly as – Abyss talking about Joe Burrow. Oh, speaking of which, you know, <laughs> there's rumor and innuendo that I may or may not have been hanging out, spending a little time with Joe Burrow's number one fan this past weekend. Can we talk about your Sunday? Can I don't we think we can share all the names. We can share some. No, no, I don't want to share. I, I just want to really share one. And that's this, it. folks, that's all we need. Well, that. <laughs> Chris Parks, Abyss, scared to come to my house. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Invited. Hey, man, got a bunch of barbecue. Got some friends coming over. Going to have a pool party. The Coaster's here. That's, I was gonna, that's the one name I was going to actually mention. So, folks, Sunday, it goes without saying, me and Karen were across the pond. Yes. I have five kids, four girls, and a boy. Yes. The, girls, the youngest is off to college and the other three and they're moving. I mean, one's working and the other one's working and one's about to go to Barcelona, Spain. So Coaster, 16 years old, we planned a, a day trip for him. His promoter, Jason James, pro wrestling entertainment and him. They had some business to do. He, he got picked up here at the house at 9 a.m. Headed south on I-65. And Conrad, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart and Karen's heart, we really, 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 I'll say really appreciate the invite. So, folks, none other than the coach himself got to spend Sunday watching All In Wembley show from the Conradison. Yep. And I can only imagine how those conversations went. And then he got to go to a WWE live event, which Cody loves live wrestling more than life itself. So what a great, great Sunday, Cody, Conrad. 
You know I mean this. I love you. I really, really appreciate that. But I hope I didn't hear that. Yep. He just hung you with all that food bill. Abyss didn't show. Like, didn't show. And let me let me just tell you. You know, I, I had a uh, our local sportscaster who's a friend of mine for our NBC affiliate, and I had uh, no. what's that? Dale. No, he wasn't. Um, but I, had, I had Casio. I had oh. Dave Silva. Wow. I had cousin Clint. Yeah, I had your man Blake, Jeff Hardy's number one fan. Did Blake come over? Blake came over. I had Steve Patty. Okay. I had um, uh, famed belt maker Dave Milliken wasn't able to make it. Oh. But I had a, a couple of WWE superstars who shall remain nameless. Okay. Uh, the lovely wife. Yeah. And I had uh, Jason James, fabulous promoter, pro wrestling ENT. Yeah. And uh, we had uh, the coaster. It was a, it was a fun time. Let me ask you: Did everybody that said they would come come? All but one. Wait, all but one. All but one. We had one no show. Now let me explain. You know me; I know how to throw a party. Oh boy, do you! I had all the movie snacks lined up. I had all the sodas. I got a bar that would make a Roos Chris blush. I mean, just every kind of whatever party favor you want. Probably like a good you thing we didn't hang together bs days but that's okay go ahead i i missed it i i feel like i missed a great opportunity for at least one weekend of me you and brian and cassio in y'all's dark days aka r 2019 that would have been tremendous anyway uh so i order our favorite mo's barbecue no sauce because oh. i know i got some professional athletes coming so just dry rubs but i got three racks of ribs i got four pounds of turkey i got 60 mm -hmm. smoked wings and I got two whole chickens. Wow. Rolled it out. Cause I'm thinking the monster abyss is coming and he's coming yep. hungry. He's a big eater. He's a huge eater. Watch the biggest wrestling show of all time and fellowship. Yep. And he and I outside of that time that you were helping to book that Rick Boog segment, we've never really got to hang out. Right. So I thought, Hey, this will be fun. And so he wanted to go to lunch somewhere. And I said, dude, just come over to the house. And Wait, I want to give you the time. The live event started at 7.30, and what time yep. did the show start? 11 in the morning. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 11 a.m. That's and right. So there's like eight hours. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Eight and a half. Yep. Goodness. And what time did he arrive into the Huntsville market? About midnight on a private charter jet the night before. Oh, stop it. He didn't get in that morning? No, midnight the night before, stayed at a hotel, hit me up to confirm the address, make sure it was still okay to come, make sure it was okay to head that way. And I said, yep, the barbecue just got here. Come on. And then he said, Can I ask you a question. Yeah. I'm not naming names, but obviously we all answer and there's an uphill org chart. Do you think Abyss was prayed of repercussions? Boy, I'm glad you asked that. Oh, okay. because I got a call from a laughing out loud, Bruce Pritchard. Oh, stop it. And Bruce Pritchard couldn't catch his breath. He was laughing so hard. And last week was a tough week. So everybody needed a reason to laugh. Yes. And Bruce found one. Okay. And he couldn't catch his breath. He was laughing so hard. Oh boy. And he said, abyss just called and asked if it was okay to eat lunch with you. And I said, do what? Well, I swear, I swear on Deborah Thompson. Oh my lord! I swear on Ginger and Baby, my dogs. And oh. I said, "He what now?" And he goes, "He just wanted to make sure it was okay to eat lunch with you." I go, "He knows we're best friends, right?" He goes, "Yeah, I think that's why he asked me." And I'm like, "Does he think I work for a rival promotion, or I'm going to get him to switch jerseys?" Like, he's coming to my house to eat barbecue. He goes, "I don't give a shit what you're doing. Anyone can have lunch with you." Why am I answering these questions? And I go, I wasn't trying to recruit him for a podcast. He goes, I don't care what you do. I told him it was fine. So, yeah. But listen, we're having a lot of fun with the best because that's what you and I like to do. So he I hung out to dry. Stuck that, me with about $400 of barbecue. That will curse him this entire football season. Don't take his picks for DraftKings using promo code MyWorld. Don't do that. No, no, no. It will. But what, it, I, what I will say, though, is he did hook us up. And Cody benefited for some great third row ringside seats. Oh, Cody boy. had a blast. Sincerely, 
Yes. Hate we missed it with Chris this time. We'll get it next time. We just have fun busting his balls here on the program. But yes, shout out, my man. Much appreciated. Our Cody. What a, so much fun. Oh, the entire day. Uh Jason James, a uh, little story behind the story. He probably wasn't out of uh he certainly hadn't crossed the Alabama Tennessee line if a man coached her was out. Oh, there you go. Sleep. Yeah. He well, he, he uh you know, I don't, I don't want him to get, can I tell you something and you promise not to tell Karen? Oh no. Don't put me. Come on now. It ain't that bad, but that dad's going to have secrets, right? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I, yep. can tell by I, the- I, I know you're on a, I know you're on a strict diet. Yep. I know that. Let me just oh, say oh. Cody ain't. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I can assure you if Oreos were anywhere around. Cody had no chicken. Yep. <laughs> Cody had no ribs. Nope. Cody had no turkey. Okay. Cody had no wings. Cody had every kind of chip that the grocery store sells. <laughs> he had every box of movie candy there is. Now he would ask for up front. He'd go, Do you like MMs? And I'd be, I do. He goes, I bet I like them more. And <laughs> <got it. laughs> Conrad, where, do you like Sour Patch Kids? I do. I bet I like them more. <laughs> I love can it. I, can I have these nerds? Yes, you can. <laughs> and he's like, Woof, I've eaten too many snacks. I'm not going to eat any snacks. Are those Oreos? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, boy, you are your father's son. Uh, by the way, I, we should mention this because because you're going to get the kick out of this. Randomly, in the middle of all this, he starts talking about how, hey, Conrad, my dad could beat up your dad. <laughs> I'm 42 years old. How am I having this conversation? He goes, yep. he could. My dad could beat up your dad. <laughs> and I said, now, respectfully, yeah, I'm going to have to disagree. And he said, why? Why do you think your dad could beat my dad? And I said, well, your dad might could beat my dad. But China beat your dad. <laughs> and he went from having such a great time with that to we don't want to talk about that yep we're not going to talk about that and so when he kept on and on and on wanting to watch the, the post-match media scrum and i was like cody it's not on they're just shooting a blank canvas there's nothing right now yeah let's watch wrestling i'm a heel man no, i fired up no mercy 99 no you didn't as soon as you started hitting checks with guitars and figure fours, he's like, turn this off, turn this off. <laughs> and I just fast forward to the end. You're covered in flour. And I was like, what do you think is going to happen next? Cody? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Turn this off. It was so <laughs> That's good. We yeah. had the best right. time with Cody. That's great. I'm so glad you let him come. It just clicked when you said, because if you remember when we were a podcast, movement, and I said, is Miss Karen making the trip over? Yeah. And you said, yes. Yeah. So and then I started thinking, he didn't say Cody was going. And then you go, yeah, it's our first time. You know, Cody's going to be at the house by himself. And I'm like, wait, he can't watch this show by himself. His mom and dad are going to be on the biggest wrestling show of all time. And he's watching it by himself. He can't do that. Come on down. Buddy, he, thanks, yeah. thanks to Jason for making that happen. Oh yeah. Thank you, everyone. I had a, uh, the only thing I, uh, two things that didn't happen. He didn't get to give Abyss a hard time. And I wanted him to slap Cassio. I said, cause I told him, I said, if you see Cassio, Slap him in the face like I slapped him and just say, hey, who hits harder, me or your, my dad? But uh, I guess that didn't come through. Hey, you would have been proud of this. Uh, at one point, he's bragging about how his dad beat up my dad because I think for a minute he thought Ric Flair was my dad, and I had to correct him on that. Yep. But anyway, eventually, you know, I had my other family here. So they're downstairs, and he says, he says the same thing again. And I said, that's their dad. You don't want to talk about that. And then he doubled down and he goes, Megan, my dad beat up your dad and he nearly bled out in the parking lot. No, he did not. Yeah. And Megan <laughs> goes, he deserved it. And he goes, told you, told you, Conrad, she said he deserved it. And so, you know, everybody had fun. It was good great. Fun. Fun. Good fun. Yeah, all good. Great fun. And by the way, listen, we needed a little bit of good news last week and uh, there's some good news for you. You too can get in the shape that Jeff's in. If you start every day with a little AG1, one scoop. That's all it is. You'll get 75 high quality ingredients, all the key nutrients you need for a real nutritional platform. If you will think of it as like your nutritional insurance, you see, it's a daily habit. It's a micro habit, if you will, with macro benefits. 
It replaces your multivitamin, your probiotic, and more in one simple, drinkable habit. It's a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source superfoods. 75 different ingredients, man. Get you everything you need to support energy, focus, strength, and clarity. My wife does it every day on the way to the gym. She's missed a day or two there, here, there, and she says, I can tell a difference. And I can tell a difference when I miss it at work. I have that afternoon crash. I don't feel like I can go as long. I'm not as focused and I'm not as productive. But when I remember to take my AG1, man, I'm setting myself up for success. And you should too. If you want to cover all of your nutritional bases, you want a single solution for your whole body, you want better gut health, you want more energy, you want to support your immune system. Maybe you just hate taking pills or vitamins. Or hey, dude, maybe you just want a supplement that actually tastes great. Well, AG1 is for you. And if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash my world. That's drinkag1.com slash my world. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. So listen, Jeff, there's, uh, this is a unique week, man. You know, we're, we're sandwiched in between two pay-per-views. This hasn't been done very often before where we've got back-to-back weeks of pay-per-views. I saw a fan on TV or on the internet rather suggest over on Twitter. Next week, y'all should call this all week because you got a Wednesday, a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, and then a Wednesday, a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, just call it all week, man. I love it. And, um, of course, Tony Schiavone on what happened when said rather than all out, by the time this is over, we should call it all worn out because we're all going to be dragging <laughs> in quite a week. You sandwich Starcast in there too, man. It's like no rest for the weary and we hope to see you all, but it came on the heels of a pretty tragic week. Mm. We lost two important people in our little wrestling family, our little wrestling community. And everybody listening to this is a part of that. You don't necessarily have to cash a paycheck from WWE or AW or impact for you to be a part of it because we know what an impact Bray Wyatt made on this world. And certainly what an impact that Terry Funk made on this world. And I know that you spent time with both of these guys over the years in different capacities, of course, but Tony Schiavone and I, on what happened when tomorrow, we actually sit down and watch the empty arena match because believe it or not, Tony never saw it. Oh, wow. That happened to, of course, in April of 81, uh, Funk started wrestling in 1965 before anyone landed on the moon. Terry Funk was in a wrestling ring. Lyndon B. Johnson was the president when Terry Funk climbed between the ropes for the first time professionally. It's all he knew. His dad was a wrestler. His brother was a wrestler together. They became the first brothers that were NWA champions. And, uh, along the way he lost, he lost his high school sweetheart, Miss Vicky because of uh wrestling. He gave him that belt back that he won in 1975 by 1977. He said, you know what? I want to win the greatest, the greatest win of my career back. And that'd be my wife, Vicky. And he got her. And sadly. We lost her a few years ago and man, Terry was, uh, finally back with his real tag team partner, not his brother, Dory, but his lovely wife, Vicky. And what a legacy he leaves behind, not just as the NWA champion or that fabulous retirement moment in 83 over in Japan forever, forever with him and Dory, or even the crazy empty arena match a couple of years prior with Lawler. Those, fa- those famous motor oil interviews as he just tore up Florida with Dusty Rhodes. But then he wrestled Hulk Hogan on Saturday night's main event, right? When wrestling got really hot in 85. And then he leaves and conquers Hollywood. He's working with Sylvester Stallone in a couple of movies. And then Patrick Swayze. And that movie comes out in May of 89, the same month that he attacks Ric Flair and makes his return and has one of the greatest years any wrestler could ever have. Doing it all with a partially broken back. I mean, it's unbelievable to think what Terry Funk accomplished and that would have been enough, but he came back and he breathed life and ECW was built on his back as the Eastern championship wrestling champion. And then of course, when they finally get on pay-per-view, it's his story in the main event of him winning the world title and that unbelievable barbed wire match that really was the lifeblood of ECW to sell those video cassettes because that's what they were. They were 
They were trying to sell those videotapes, man. That was how they made their cash cow. And then he has his WrestleMania moment and it's a big one with, uh, against the new age outlaws and your pal, Brian and our mutual friend, Mick Foley. And then somehow he comes to WCW after all that. It's unbelievable. The legacy this guy left behind and the number of people that he impacted, especially when you consider that the majority of his career wasn't even televised. There's no record of it. You can't go watch it on film, but I had a friend of mine who's kind of a new wrestling friend. He's trying to get into it, but he didn't grow up wrestling. He doesn't live it and breathe it like you and I have. And he was asking me about Terry Funk and I had to think for a minute and Jeff, I, I described him like this. I said, Terry Funk is your favorite wrestler's favorite wrestler. Mm. What, what sort of, uh, mm. how would you define Terry Funk's legacy and impact on professional wrestling? Everyone knew that Terry, uh, you know, his health was declining. So I'll just say, you know, over the last several months, you know, or maybe even a year, um, how long ago was he? It doesn't matter, but you know, I think he was diagnosed a uh, year, year and a half ago. I'm not exactly sure. I may be off on that, but j just kind of thinking about Terry from time to time, there are so many different kind of flashes of my rec, my, my thoughts and my memories and how I view Terry and you talk about a guy and I don't want to say reinventing himself. Uh, cause that, that kind of sounds like, I, I don't know if that sounds right or evolving. Uh, I think maybe a better word, but just kind of through the years, my earliest memories are of my father's favorite world champion. And I've said this was Dory, his brother. Um, and he would look, my dad would look at me and say, I loved him as a champion, but now if you want to talk about drawing money, now you got to have to take Terry. Uh, it, it, he just had such high respect for their different styles. And of course, uh, Dorian and, and, um, Terry's father. And, you know, again, a family of promoters and wrestlers and minds and lifers, if you will, that kinship, that camaraderie, the, the just kind of the first time I met Terry. Um, first time I met Terry was in Memphis, 88, 89, and he drug me around the ring. And, you know, uh, I think I've already told this story, or I don't know, did I tell it last week about Terry? I, I don't know. Um, but, but um, no, that I, where did I, I think I'd maybe have said that uh, Saturday at Box Park. I'll, I'll tell that in a second, Conrad. But, um, you know, the, the empty arena match was one of those things that sit in my dad's basement that I got to watch that three quarter inch tape, not VHS tape. I got to watch that. And so from the early NWA champions to, to, uh, you know, Terry in the empty arena and then him coming in and working with Lawler in the late eighties. And, you know, I, I can remember him arriving at, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't work ECW, but I was obviously aware of all that. But when he arrived at the, uh, WWF, you know, right at the height of the attitude era, I, I was a little bit, I don't say it kind of let me down that he went as chainsaw Charlie, uh, it, you know, didn't go as, as, as Terry, you know, it was th that, but man, he made that work. And then you just referenced the tag title match and the mania moment. Uh, and then, at WCW, uh, it, you talk about some crazy times. He was the commissioner, and yes, yeah, so, so me and Terry worked quite a bit together in the WCW days. But all through that, it was like Terry. My personal relationship was would be that, yeah, he's a man's man, but such a unique personality, but. He, I always felt like, and I say this out of unbelievable respect that we would sit down and it's just like, okay, it's our family business. And that's how he always related it to. He would bring up my dad or my grandmother 
or Eddie Marlin, my grandfather, or my uncle Thomas, uh, you know, my great uncle Thomas, or just kind of the family business in that we just talked shop about wrestling and it was so natural. And I was always a little bit in awe because of what you kind of stated. He was world champion in the 70s. So his career spanning 40, 50 years and him evolving and staying on top and his his ability, you know, a moonsault, dude doing a moonsault on, you know, his his in-ring ability and athleticism uh, at the, at the very end of his career still kind of mesmerized me. Um, he, they'll never, ever, ever, ever be, and it's a different time, a different era, but man, uh, as they say, when God made Terry Funk, he completely threw away the mold. And unfortunately, as folks are listening to this, I believe today will be the celebration of life of, uh, Bray Wyatt. What an innovator. How creative, I mean, everybody that you and I know who worked with him creatively says the dude was nothing short of a genius. Those fabulous promos, that character, the presentation. I mean, it was really just remarkable to see what was possible. And he was one of those unique talent where you could sort of color outside of the lines and you get a little creative license with a guy like him or the undertaker that maybe you don't with other characters. And, um, to think back, man, WrestleMania 30, that was his first WrestleMania. And remember, you know, I remember us talking about your first WrestleMania and what was supposed to be, and the doggone match winds up getting cut. And it was like a, a big eight or 10 man tag and had to be disappointing. Well, Bray's first WrestleMania, Jeff, think about the pressure here. He's probably like 27 at the time. It's against John Cena at the Superdome at WrestleMania 30. Mm. Like, that's unbelievable to be, to have that much confidence that the company had that much confidence in him to put him with the franchise in a dome show like WrestleMania 30 against John Cena. And whether you love the character or you didn't, you had to respect the creativity and the legacy because much like yourself, third generation, man, I don't think enough people talk about that, but black Jack Mulligan was so believable and so strong on promos and the real life, best friend of Ric Flair for so many years in the early days of uh, flair coming to the Carolinas. And then of course, uh, Barry Wyndham becomes a part of the family and Mike Rotundo and, and now Bray and Bo and, and to just think, Hey, my dad's IRS. He wrestled Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. And my uncle was, uh, one of the most critical members of the four horsemen and a former NWA champion and Barry Wyndham. And Oh, by the way, my grandfather was blackjack. What a, what a wrestling legacy. You know, nobody talks about that as a great wrestling family, but it is my goodness. Look at that talent. And for him to be gone, damn the wrestling so young in his mm -hmm. mid thirties with, and, and I, I believe they were getting ready to plan a wedding him and Jojo and he leaves her behind. And now four youngins, I mean, including a baby, like a small child, my goodness, man. It brings a lot of perspective and clarity where at a time right now in wrestling, where people are talking about silly, trivial wrestling shit that doesn't really matter. Mm. Uh, Bray Wyatt's passing is a sobering reminder of perspective in life that, Hey, you know, wrestling's wrestling, but this is real life. And these are real people with real families and real children and real spouses. And, um, I just want to. So I think it's really commendable what WWE did. There's a report out, Jeff, that instead of Bray getting or his family or estate getting a royalty off of Bray Wyatt merchandise, WWE is donating 100%, not just the contracted portion, but every nickel. And it's times like these, you know, that feels like we're all supposed to say thoughts and prayers, and that doesn't feel like it's enough when you're talking about a guy who's in his mid 30s. Jeez. But everybody who ever met him, myself included, like I met him one time. He never forgot my name. We'll go out of his way to come say hello and speak and always just grinning ear to ear. He was a special human being, a nice man. And, uh, what a performer, what a legacy he leaves behind. I know you were fortunate enough to, uh, be in the company when, when he was in the company for at least a cup of coffee, but certainly you watched from afar and saw the creativity of this character. 
It was something else, wasn't it? So, I mean, it just, you know, a, a part of me and probably like a lot of folks, um, you know, angry, but what am I angry at? But you know, just so damn young that that is, you know, Terry, like my father, what a long, fruitful, crazy, blessed, a lot of times miraculous life um, they lived. Bray, uh, but as, you know, the old saying goes uh, that I can relate to on a couple of different levels, you know, only the good die young. It, it is so tragic in so, so many ways, but um, we can either accept it or, or, or stay angry about it. So accepting that, uh, you know, um, he was with us and, and the human that he was and everything that goes with it. You know, when I first went to the WWF, um, me and Bray's father, Mike Rotundo, um, there was one show that we ended up riding together. And then, you know, uh, there was a, uh, you know, Rotundo was Mike. the father was notoriously fast. When he finished his match, he would be in the dressing room, full on shower and ready to go quick. And so, uh, I, you know, if I'm riding with him, so we, we made several trips together. That's how I got to know Mike. And this is when Bray, they were kids, you know, 94, they, they were little bitty. Um, and seeing him come along Husky and just kind of watching the development. Um, but knowing uh, again, just like Terry, uh, it's, it's, it's a different set of circumstances. I could relate to, you know, we can all relate to one another on, on different ways. Bray was the son of a wrestler and the grandson of a wrestler. It was a wrestling family. I, I we, that's, I'll say how we bonded on that, but we certainly talked about it and connected on it. And, uh, we had a live event several years ago, uh, up in Cincinnati. I think it was that I took my son Cody to, and, um, Bray could not have made Cody feel any more special. It was unbelievable. Uh, just, I mean, to this day, Cody still talks about it. Uh, Cody was down in the dumps, uh, about it. Um, but you know, I could I could tell a few different stories, Conrad, about Bray. But the one that um, that I always I, I don't know it, it was almost kind of like a a revelation to me, a, a somewhat of a light bulb that uh, we had uh, WWE. We had finished a creative session that went late into the night, and it, let's just say it was a Wednesday night. I think, Conrad, I'm talking one a.m. Right, uh, late late and the chairman Vince says, Hey Jeff, we got live events coming up. He said, why don't you step into my office? So everybody else is going home. So I go in there and we, at one in the morning at one in the morning, Conrad, this story, I'll never, ever, I'll never forget it. Never, <laughs> never. Uh, we go in and we go over the card and kind of what the live events are, are coming up this weekend, but Brian, I'm out, I'm out, Jeff, I just want to make sure everybody's following. We finished a creative meeting at 1 a.m. Now we're going to book house show matches at 1 a.m. on a Wednesday. Continue. Yep. And so I go in there um, and, we, you know, we go over the card and the, the, the order of the matches and all that. And, man, I wish I could exactly remember, but it's Bray and Seth Rollins. And, okay. and it was fr fresh out of that. So this was pre-pandemic, 2019-ish, right? Yeah, two thousand in 2019, 2000 pandemic was beginning of 2020 right uh so anyway it was it, during that time frame and it was a, it was a surreal experience because vince sits back and starts thinking through this match and when i tell you we discussed in minute minutia detail i mean not to peel the onion and layer two back, but I'm talking minutia, minutia, minutia about everything of the match, not just lighting cues, but move for move and just all kinds of things we, we took. And I took note after note, after note, after note, after note while it's going on, because I was going to the live this weekend and he wanted me to kind of relay it to these guys. 
Uh, so as I'm taking notes and this and Conrad, it, I, I know this night I never went to bed because my car service pickup was like 5 a.m. So it got till 2.33 in the morning and I'm thinking, okay, I'm definitely not going to bed. That's cool. So as we wrap up, Vince looks at me and he says, send me an email of a recap of these notes. I just want to make sure that I, I okay, that, that's cool. Um, no worries. Do that. So I leave Titan Towers, get to my hotel. About what time? I, I want to say in the between three and four. Okay. I type up the notes in great detail, and I wanted to make sure they were in chrono chronological order of what was going to be given to the talent this weekend. And I'm telling you unbelievable detail. And we went all through it. Anyway, get back, type it all up, send it back to Vince. He responded in a back. So I stayed up. He responded pretty quick, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yep. Good to go. Thanks. Let me know how it goes. Okay. So I don't know if I flew to the show. No, I think I went home because the live event would have been Saturday night. This time Friday night or Saturday night. Anyway, so I get to the venue and Bray's there before Seth. And I said, Hey man, I just want to kind of, uh, that this is uh, what what he wants, and I'm thinking as a talent, man, this is this is pretty damn detailed. I, I wasn't exactly sure how all this was going to go, and uh, Bray heard it, and then Seth heard it, and then Bray, and then I'll be damn Conrad. Bray took that body of work and made it better, uh, and I, I'll just say that because he made it his own. I, I really, in, in the oohs and the ahs and the crowd reactions and, and just how things went down, both guys are phenomenal talents. Bray, growing up in the business and, you know, Blackjack, territory guy, very obviously territory guy. Mike, super, super athlete out of Syracuse. You know, he came in and essentially kind of went straight to the top and, and, he did a little bit of territory, but he was WWF early. Anyway, all of them super successful. So that's Bray's set point. But for him to have the creative mind that just went, I don't say in another different, I mean, sports entertainment to the extreme, uh, but with the fundamentals that he could back it up, his uniqueness shown through in so many different ways that he, he, they just, his artistic ability, I always thought it to myself when you hear in Nashville, the, the different mega stars that like, there'll never be another Willie Nelson. He, he plays different. He sings different. He writes different. He, there is nobody that you can even, there is no like, oh, he's kind of got a Willie Nelson sound. No, there's so many different artists in music that you can kind of say, that they are a trendsetter. They're their own talent. You can't even really imitate them. They're, they're just, they, they're just totally unique. That's Bray in wrestling to me and getting those weekly merch reports, Conrad, I'm sure Bruce or uh, others, or, you know, I don't know if you, at one time, I yeah. think Bray was selling more merch than any of the other active talent combined. Yeah. It, it was unbelievable how hot and obviously how relatable that character uh, people would just gravitate to it. Super, super hot. But that goes into uh, his creativity. You know, that, mm -hmm. that wasn't, that character wasn't designed out of creative services and I'm not disrespecting that it wasn't designed at, at a wrestling school or anywhere that all came out of Bray's head. And, and look, he's got some great producers, um, I won't go into names, but you know, the people know who, who they are that, that, you know, those fun house and the videos and the lighting treatments and the magic of all the production, but it all came out uh, of Bray's brain. And, and that's something that I believe the wrestling industry thrives on. I don't need more of, yeah. 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 That the artistic, uh, 
that that's that's what makes the business you know when you think back on how the business moves forward bray was a guy that was moving the business forward and uh it's a cliche but it's true the devil's in the details for him to take something that was so detailed that you thought as an old school guy this is too detailed that got your rubber stamp and vince's Bray thought maybe there's a few more details we can add. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you uh, j- just kind of the pauses that he would put in and there was a certain lighting cue that he came back and he said, Hey, this is, this is what, what's really going to work and set this part off. And it was like, wow. And Jeff, just to read between the lines, cause I don't know that everybody's picking it up. These weren't details we're working out for a premium live event. Like a Royal rumble. These weren't no. lighting cues that we're discussing for a, a closing angle on Friday night SmackDown. This is a non-televised live event Yep. that, you know, five to 10,000 people are going to see and it lives for them and them only. There's no cameras. There won't be any record of this, but he understood these five to 10,000 people paid money to get the quote unquote Bray Wyatt experience. We're going to give it to them. Boy, you ain't kidding. And they did. Yes, they absolutely did. And that's where you just, you know, you, you look at, I don't want to say legendary. You, you, you look at performers through the years that made a difference in their creativity. Bray's right at the top. Terry, Terry is as well. You know, yes, yes. all promo, uh, him and Lola getting together, do the empty arena, um, you know, d- different things that are so out of the box thinking you just go, there's no way this is going to work. Oh no, it worked. All right. And, and they were, and it they were two it. guys who, who never had a quote unquote house show match, Jeff. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to say, we've heard a lot of talent over the years say, you know, oh man, he always got like for John Cena, they would say, oh, he's big match. John, you know, he might do the same thing. Paint by color, paint by numbers. He's do he's doing the routine. Everybody wants to see, but when it really matters on a big pay-per-view boy, you're going to get big match. John Cena. he's going to deliver you a big main event, but to hear that, that level of detail went into a house show, Jeff, that tells you, man, he never phoned it in. He was never giving you a quote unquote house show match. He wanted to give it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was amazed at the chairman at three in the morning. He's caring about house shows. Uh, Karen. That, I mean, that, that's an understatement. I mean, yeah. detailed, detailed, and then translating it to a talent. And they're going to go, oh, shit, I love it. Let me just do this, this, and this and make it better. I just went, okay, that's some real creative juices flowing through these folks. It, it, uh, mad respect for both of them out of that experience. That's probably the connective tissue of Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. Yes. I don't know that they ever spent any time together, but passion just poured through them both. And they loved wrestling and we love them for it. And our thoughts and prayers go to the wonderful family that both leave behind. Of course, Dory's still with us and, and Terry's got some, some lovely children who are still with us and boy, what a legacy Bray has with his father, Mike and his, his brother, who we know as Bo Dallas. And of course his sister and Jojo and all those lovely children, you know, it's times like these, we wish we had something we could say to make it better. We can't, but we wanted to uh, at least acknowledge their importance and their impression that they left on us, myself and Jeff as wrestling fans and the whole wrestling community at large. And, um, it happened in a crazy week, man, you know, at a time when everybody's talking about the biggest wrestling show in history and silly nonsense out afterwards. And I think there's a payback this Saturday. There's a WWE pay-per-view on Saturday heads up with collision. And then there's a, a pay-per-view on Sunday and the beat goes on, but goodness gracious, we, uh, we're thankful for having had Bray Wyatt and Terry Falk on our television sets. So Conrad yesterday morning when we, uh, were text exchanging, well, it was, it was your middle of the night, my morning, that kind of mindset, uh, we maybe talk about this a little bit or, 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 or I'll just say this and we'll move on. That's the thought that kind of came to my mind as me and Karen were bored and she's like, well, it's over. Now we're headed home. All right. Now you're doing what on what day? And I said, I think I'm going to, you know, we're trying to work out the week and you know, Cody's school. We got, you know, Jaren's at college. Is she coming home? 
Kira's going to LA. You know, I just say life. Yeah. L life just, it don't stop. It yeah. just, I mean, it, and, and I know I'm stating the obvious, but um, it's like, what really matters in life? Yes. Because Wembley, is, I, 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 I'm so glad that I soaked the, the, that moment in. Uh, I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that I just said, man, I, yes. am, I am grateful to be here. Um, I, I guess my point being is uh, this whole thought came on to me as you were kind of living the moment. It, it, it's really all we have, period, because school is going to keep going. Our jobs are going to keep going. I hate to say this, but relationships, it, all of that just, it, I mean, life doesn't slow down. You just That's said right. We did podcast movement. We did Atlanta taping, Wembley, Fox Park, going to Chicago, three events there, StarCast, mega event. What matters? The moments that we have each and every day. So um, that's what matters. How are you going to fulfill your moments that are impactful? Um, I guess that's all I'm really trying to say. It's good reflecting on those two guys. It, it, it made me stop and go, yep. What matters is the moments. Well, we appreciate you guys spending some of your moments with us today. We realize that, uh, we've had two now in a row different than normal mile worlds, but we felt like they were warranted. Uh, we will get back to our regularly scheduled programming. We still want to celebrate Jeff Hardy. That's going to be coming up here, uh, soon here on my world. Want to thank everybody. Uh, for tuning in over in the uh, live broadcast as well. We had a ton of great folks show up and support us for madfreeshows.com. Whether it's John Hickson or Denovius Mack or Eric Green or uh, Dylan Leahy or George, or there's so many of you guys, I'm sure I'm missing a handful. Shout out to all of you, Frank and, uh, Frank and uh, Josh and everybody. We, cre we appreciate you guys. Look forward to catching up with you in Chicago. This was a weird week for wrestling, man. It was like uh, the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And, uh, as Macho Man used to say, the beat goes on. Yep. Uh, we'll be back next week talking all things Chicago and StarCast and all out. And we'll do our best to bring it to you on time. But of course, there's a lot of travel involved for everyone involved here. And we do want to make it topical. So we'll do our best to have a Tuesday morning drop. But if not, uh, you'll get it sooner rather than later. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Hope you'll check us out over on uh, boxagimmicks.com. Pick up. A lot of chatter shirt. Support us on YouTube too. It's my world on youtube.com. And um, man, we'll see you guys in Chicago. In the meantime, go out of your way. Watch some Terry Funk matches. Watch some Bray Wyatt matches. And if you're not sure what to watch, watch them with me and Tony tomorrow on my on uh what happened when. And uh be sure to catch Jeff later tonight on uh AEW Dynamite, AWTIX.com. Come boo the last outlaw in person. He, lo he loves those F you Jarrett chants. He don't take it personally. He wants your hate. Let it flow through his body. I'm ready for the stage show at Starcast, pal. You're getting a oh. good shot. No, I'm not. I guaranteed I wouldn't. I, I, I prom damn it. I did that to myself. That's right. Come see the last outlaw. You can come uh, meet Karen, but say nice things or look out. <laughs> S-T-A-R-R-C-A-S-T dot com. And we'll see you guys next week right here on my world. Peace. Eric Bischoff here again, telling you about our friends over at SaveWithConrad.com. Now, Conrad's always talking about how they are helping homeowners save money, but did you know that Conrad and his team can also help you become a homeowner? They make the home buying process more enjoyable than, I don't know, making out with Stephanie and Linda. Ouch! But don't take my word for it. Hi, I'm Sarah Davis, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, so my husband has been a huge fan of Conrad's podcast for many, many years. And for years, we were on road trips, and he would have me listen to it. And then I got really into it. And so when it came time for us to buy a house, it was kind of like, there's really no other option at this point. Like, we have to go down this path, right? It was the best. I worked with Steve. I don't know what to do. I was looking more for preparing to buy a house. How do I get this in order? What does this need to look like? What do I need to move around? What's more important that I pay off first? Because I'm a first time home buyer. I don't know what that needs to look like. So that's when I called you guys and I talked with, with Steve and phenomenal from day one. I got a full education on home buying before I was ever asked to fill out an application. 
before I was ever asked to do anything, which was just, I mean, I cannot brag on you guys enough. I literally cannot tell enough people about you because we would not have a home if it weren't for you, if it weren't for that interaction and weren't for the learning process. And I feel like I went into being a first time home buyer from the time, by the time we got through the end of the process with the same education that people need four or five homes to buy. And so now I feel like, all right, well, we can do this. We can do real estate. We can, I can actually make good decisions and ask good questions at closing and beyond because of everything that you taught me. My name is Sarah Davis and I got into my dream home with Save with Conrad. And unlike the dirt sheets, we're not making this up. Check out all the five-star reviews. Go to savewithconrad.com and do it today. Be grateful you did. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Woo!